to Babylon Me, you there in Babylon All right, folks, we are live now. You gotta love that for the PrisonPlanet.tv subscribers when it's just like... <laughs> and there's nothing. It is May 27th, Wednesday, 2009. We're going to have Mark Dice on in the third hour. I'm pretty excited about that. Really going to be breaking down angels and demons now that I've seen it. Because I think it's really important. You know, the Illuminati is kind of a buzzword because this is a big summer movie. And really, for me, it was kind of a big disappointment. Now, I'm going to give you the, uh, the short JB review right here. But really a six and a half, maybe out of seven. You know, Ron Howard doesn't really impress me. Uh, way better on Happy Days than a director. You know, Apollo 13, not a really compelling movie. I thought it would be much better. I, I don't know. Ron Howard, not my thing, I guess. Uh, but even The Da Vinci Code, I thought the book was a thousand times better than the movie. You know, <clears throat> whatever way you look at that film. You know, a ton of symbolism in it. You know, totally worth it to at least look at the perspective. And in this, it was just a disappointment, again, because the Illuminati is mentioned by name less than a dozen times, I think, throughout the whole thing. And they only show two symbols of the Illuminati. This isn't really, you know, I, I guess there's a couple statues that point this way or whatever. I don't know. It just, uh, it just didn't do it for me. Not a lot of insight even into the Catholic Church. Uh, I was already well aware of, you know, the black smoke, white smoke, Pope thing. It was just a disappointment overall, but I do want to talk about the whitewash because, again, they only mentioned two members, and it was uh, Bernini and Galileo, and they did make them out to be scholars and intellectuals, and, you know, I, I guess that's when the, the church is the aggressor, and I'm not sticking up for the church either, but uh, I don't know. Overall, not a great movie. Other than that, I got all these stories. Uh, we've talked about the glowing pigs. We've talked about genetically modified, you know, food to look a certain way. We've talked about the HIV in corn. Well, get ready because it's glowing monkeys time. And if you remember, like year, a couple years back, you know, I, I was uh, talking about the uh, glow in the dark pigs. Well, just a few months back now, uh, the glow in the dark pigs, and I think it was something like two out of 11 carried the trait to glow in the dark. So obviously the genetic engineering did pass on. And with these monkeys, it's the same thing. So we're going to be talking about that at length. Mystery in South Korea. Now, why am I covering this? I, I don't even, this might be the only thing I say about it, but I uh, really wanted to cover this. A former uh, president of South Korea jumped off a cliff four days ago, and he was getting uh, intertwined with some kind of scandal with his wife, and it was a monetary scandal. Who knows? Maybe he did kill himself. Uh, maybe he was ready to blow the whistle on some other powerful people, and they usually don't like that, but uh, jumped off a cliff. So, I, you know, I think I might just leave that one right where it stands. I, I got Hartman looking at me like, jumped off a cliff, huh? That's usually not the way they go out. <laughs> so a former president of South Korea jumps off a cliff. We're going to be talking about this uh, <clears throat> right-wing military writer, uh, former member of the military. He always gets in the uh, New York Post, USA Today. He's a special contributor to Fox News. He basically says... He's telling you what they're already doing on a very lower level than what they're going to be doing outright. Um, they're talking. He talks about basically censorship of the media, killing the media. That's right, killing paramil. What, what is it? Uh, partisan journalists. And every journalist to this guy is apparently partisan. They're hurting the war effort, so they're going to be targeted. There was a couple people out in the war that died suspiciously. That guy on NBC had a heart attack. You know. And uh, another story we're going to cover that really does intertwine with the whole mess over in the Middle East. And it's, it's, it's not a mess in the way that the right or the left will tell you it's a mess. It's a mess that we're still there, that we continue to just dominate the region, try to build our Eurasian Union, and uh, kill a bunch of people. But uh, there's more news coming out about these photos of rape and everything else that's coming out of uh, the UK. We already know there are videotapes of much worse in these Iraqi prisons. Duh. I mean, what do you think all these soldiers coming home talking about it or lying? Give me a break. It's the Info Warrior with Jason Burmes. We'll be back after this. PrisonPlanet.tv, InfoWars.com, and my little blog site, TheInfoWarrior.com. Let me tell you a little bit about one of our great sponsors, HomeGain.com. This is the place to get you started buying or selling a home, finding a realtor, and getting any real estate questions answered. Go to HomeGain.com and see what I'm talking about. 
All you need to do is type in your home address and you will get an instant free estimate of your home's value online. This is a great way to be able to monitor the value of your home. And again, it's absolutely free. There are tons of tools to help you. For instance, if you want to remodel your home, go to HomeGain.com. Use their Home Sale Maximizer to help you determine which home improvements can most increase your home's value before you put it on the market. For 10 years, these folks have been helping home sellers and buyers. Visit their link at InfoWars.com. Look for Max, the orange home gain gorilla, to help you with any real estate needs you might have. You'll love this site. It's HomeGain.com. H-O-M-E-G-A-I-N.com. Check them out today. If you believe in redemption, I'm calling to you from another dimension. All right, folks, we are back. It's the Info Warrior. We're going to be taking your calls, 866-582-9933. Right-wing paramilitary writer, I'm sorry, military writer. Why am I calling him paramilitary? He probably did do paramilitary work. We may have to kill war journalists. Let me repeat that. We may have to kill war journalists. This is out of a raw story. If we could bring it up on the prisonplanet.tv for the kids. Uh, former soldier Ralph Peters has carved out quite a niche for himself in the world of publishing. Uh, his work regularly lands on the pages of the New York Post and has cropped up in USA Today and even a special contributor to Fox News. But after today's showing in his latest column for the Journal uh, of International Security Affairs, Mr. Peters seemingly treads very close to finding himself at odds with his journalistic colleagues. I would think so. I would think when he says, you know what, let's not kill the military guys, the guys that are pro-war. Let's kill the people that are reporting the truth. That's what this means. You see how sick and degraded uh, the mindset of this type of warfare is? It's already going on. Let me, let me repeat that. Whatever this guy says is already going on. Journalists are already targeted. It's happened on several times. You know what? We should bring some of those stories up because journalists have already been targeted and killed in the Middle East. Believe it. Believe the hype, folks. It's just like we know about the videos of rape in Iraq. What's, what's the controversy? You think it stopped? You think that, like, magically they just said, poof. I mean, they didn't have any trials. They didn't prosecute anybody. A few photos came out and they said, oh, nobody, nobody big got in trouble. Nobody who allowed it to happen, ordered it to happen. You know, some low-level rapists and killers got, and that's what they are. Listen, you, you, you kill somebody, I, oh, you don't know what it's like, Jason. You don't, you've never been in that situation. Listen, you, you, you rape a person, I don't care what situation you're in, you're a rapist. I mean, you're Ricky Rapist, no matter what. I, I just don't understand how you're anything. You're, you're a filthy person. Shame on you. You know, I don't, even if you don't believe in God, you need some kind of repentance. You know, some, some kind of restitution for doing something as, as vile as that. As, in a war setting with, oh, I can't, all right, I'm done. I'm going to keep reading this article. You got the article for me, Jaron? Let's bring it up as I read the rest of it here. After all, reporters don't really like it when the editorial page calls for the consideration of grinding them into bloody chunks as a matter of war policy. In his latest essay in a segment entitled The Killers Without Guns, <clears throat> The Killers Without Guns, unbelievable, uh, Peter suggests that the media is responsible for saving Hamas in Gaza, in, in Gaza and Hezbollah in Le Lebanon. But the media had failed to defeat the U.S. government's charge toward Iraq. Rejecting the God of their fathers, the neo-pagans who dominate the media serve as lackeys to the terrorist bloody altar. He gallingly charges. Oh, the terrorist bloody altar. What terrorists are those? The ones that this government funded, this government trained, this government had at military bases on 9-11? Those ones? Are those, the, are those the terrorists? Osama bin Laden, CIA asset? Oh, I'll say it. I know. Sean Hannity says, "There's the, you're a crackpot. <laughs> when the president of Pakistan gets up there and talks about conversations that he had with his wife about it. Both of them knew it. It was very evident. We got that. There we go. That's the article I'm looking for. Raw Storytown. Uh, what's it say right here? Let, let's, uh, let's, uh, let's read it one more time. Rejecting the God of their fathers, the neo-pagans who dominate the media serve as lackeys as at the terrorist bloody altar he gallingly charges. Here's where it gets really ridiculous. Pretending to be impartial. Yeah, because again, you can't report on rape. The self-segregating personalities 
Drawn to media careers overwhelmingly take a side, and that side is rarely ours. Although it seems unthinkable now, although it already happens, guys. It already happens. It's unthinkable now. Now, uh, unfortunately, this is probably policy in a lot of places. Future wars may require censorship, happens. News blackout, happens. And ultimately, military attacks on the partisan media, happens. Perceiving themselves as superior beings, journalists have positioned themselves as protected species combatants. But freedom of the press stops when its abuse kills our soldiers and strengthens our enemies. Such a view arouses disdain today, but a media establishment that has forgotten any sense of sober patriotism may find that it has become tomorrow's conventional wisdom. Zigale, huh? Zigale, because that's what that's about, baby.